Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to my brand new mod spotlight on an Industrial Craft 2 add-on called Greg Tech. Now if you guys haven't had a chance to check out Greg Tech, it's a pretty interesting mod. Um, it changes some things in the existing Industrial Craft 2 and adds a bunch of stuff, mostly centered around higher tier, uh, more powerful and crazy machines. Um, but it's pretty neat, it's pretty well balanced, and uh, the mod author has even said to himself, you know what, I feel like certain things about existing Industrial Craft aren't balanced, so I'm going to make a few changes there. Now those changes are all changeable in a config file, so if you don't like his changes you don't have to use them in order to play his mod. But uh, it's pretty cool. It's a really neat mod and it adds a whole bunch of cool stuff to um, Industrial Craft. So without further ado, how about I start showing you what it adds and uh, give you some pretty cool ideas about what Greg Tech is all about. Now the first thing I should tell you is that Greg Tech adds a bunch of ores to the game. Let's go ahead and start mining here. Uh, first off, we've got this nifty little thing called Silver Ore. Uh, that is part of the Ore Dictionary, so if you have uh, Red Power 2 installed, don't worry, your Silver Ore will work out just fine. Uh, the next thing is it adds some Iridium Ore to the world that you can generate. Uh, so the Iridium Ore that's used in some um, industrial craft recipes uh, can also go ahead and get spawned from the world. Um, we've also got this nifty block called the ruby and this guy called the sapphire again part of the ore dictionary so in interchangeable with red power 2 uh, finally we've got this cool guy bauxite ore and uh, this thing which spawns in the nether which is pyrite dust so now that you've seen some of the add-ons uh, to the world gen stuff let me show you some of the different um, recipes that are available to you. For example, the macerator no longer is just a couple pieces of flint. You actually have to get yourself a machine block and uh, some diamonds, and you're also going to need to get yourself some um, an, an advanced circuit here, so you can see an advanced circuit. He's also added to the ore dictionary circuits uh, to interact with uh, some of the buildcraft logic gates and the forestry uh, items. So you can see that there's some um, golden autarkic gates, the advanced circuit, pulsating chipset, and uh, all these different diamantine electron tubes. So all these different uh, gates are interchangeable in the ore dictionary. So if you want to go ahead and use um, advanced circuits to make uh, some you know, autarkic gates in buildcraft, you can do that. And uh, it's pretty neat. So changes to the ore dictionary as well as changes to some existing industrial craft machines for example this one requiring diamonds you can see you can also interchange machine blocks with uh, the sturdy mach machine encasing so pretty cool not too bad um, again you can disable this change in your config file so that if you don't want your macerator's recipe to change you can disable that You'll also note that the solar panel has a slightly different recipe, uh, actually rather different indeed. Uh, and one of the first things you'll discover is this silicon cell. Um, you're about to find out that there's a ton of different cells available. Look at them all. Uh, you got hydrogen, deuterium, tritium, helium, wolfram, all this crazy stuff. Um, and they all come uh, from different recipes that are part of the industrial centrifuge. So uh, the industrial centrifuge is going to be used quite a bit, and you're about to find out a lot about it because that's the next machine I'm going to cover. But do note that there's quite a few other recipes that are uh, a little bit changed here. For example, the water mill, again, slightly different, um, requires a generator surrounded with uh, aluminium ingots or aluminum, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Uh, that guy is not too bad to make. You just need to get some of this aluminum dust here. Uh, aluminum dust comes um, from a couple different sources. Uh, you can see it's made by macerating uh, your aluminum ingots, not a big deal. And uh, the main source, of course, is the industrial centrifuge again, which, again, I'm going to get into in just a second here. But the industrial centrifuge will be one of your probably most used items in Greg Tech. So, we've seen a bunch of cells that are part of Greg Tech, and they're going to be used in a lot of the more advanced um, items. You can see hydrogen, deuterium, tritium, like I said. Um, let's check out if we want to make a um, solar panel. We're going to need to get ourselves some cool stuff. So, let's check out that recipe. Solar panels require silicon cells. Now, a silicon cell um, is an industrial centrifuge recipe, and there's a couple ways you can get it. First off, you can um, throw some lazurite dust inside your industrial centrifuge. And the GUI of the industrial centrifuge is pretty simple. You simply place an item in here, and you place some empty cells up here, and you'll get outputs in these four slots. So the centrifuge actually really does work like a centrifuge. It takes one item and splits it up into different component parts. Um, typically. So let's check out uh, the silicon cell. That's one way to get silicon cells. You'll actually get six of them 
from one lazurite dust, from 59 lazurite dust. So you have to throw 59 lazurite dust in here to get six silicon, eight sodium, some aluminum dust, and some calcium cells. But there's other recipes too, of course, which make it a little bit easier. Like, uh, you know, you can throw some emerald dust in there if you want. You can throw some redstone in there if you want. You get a good amount of silicon from that, as well as a few other type of dusts. Um, you can easily just throw half a stack of sand in there with some, com and you'll get uh, some compressed air and a silicon cell. So let's give that a shot. You can also see that um, each of these recipes, in fact, requires different amounts of power, uh, EU, and different amounts of time. So this lazurite dust takes quite a while and quite a bit of EU. But, uh, you know, something like the emerald dust, a little bit quicker, and, uh, you know, all kinds of different numbers here. So it does take a little bit of time. So if we had some flint dust, it would take under a minute and just 5,000 EU to get you one silicon cell. Not too bad. And you can do the same with clay dust. Cool. Um, but it'll take you almost 500 seconds, so just shy of, uh, you know, 10 minutes here to get yourself some silicon cells from the industrial centrifuge. So let's go ahead and get ourselves some flint dust. Pretty easy. Just macerate up some flint. All right. Doesn't seem so bad. So what I'm going to do is get some flint dust. There we go. And uh, let's go ahead and place eight of them in here. Remember I said empty cells in the top. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And once I put the eighth in there is when it should start running. So you can see as soon as I did that, it ate up the uh, eight flint dust. And the centrifuge is running. And it's going to take about 50 seconds and uh, 5,000 EU. So there you go. That's how to use the industrial centrifuge to take certain items and split them up into different components. And uh, you'll find pretty quickly that not only are there a lot of cells, but there's a lot of dusts added here. All kinds of crazy stuff. Um, you got ender pearl dust and, uh, you know, ender eye dust, lazurite dust, pyrite dust, like tons of this stuff, right? Not even kidding. Just a lot of it. And uh, it's used for all kinds of different things. So we can check out a couple different uses here. So flint dust, of course, used what we're using it for now. Netherrack dust, you can get redstone, sulfur, gold nuggets, and coal out of. It takes about 10 minutes, but, you know, it'll happen. And uh, sodalite dust. Oh, wow, what the heck is this stuff? Uh, you can get yourself some sodium cells and some aluminum dust and a chlorite cell and silicon cells. So crazy amount of different items here. Pretty neat. Um, definitely something you're going to want to check out. Um, and this is just like for your information on how to handle all the different dusts and cells that you're about to see in all the advanced recipes in the mod. So let's go into some of those things now. Now I'm going to kind of just work down the uh, wiki for Greg Tech. You can go check it out yourself. There's a lot of information available to you out there. And uh, we're going to talk about a couple of the different blocks that are here. I'm going to do my best to cover everything in the mod, but it's a pretty expansive mod. There's a real lot of stuff to cover. So hopefully I get it all good. But uh, if not, maybe I'll have a follow-up to this video where I cover some of the things I may have missed. So let's go check out one of the first things in this mod that's pretty neat. It's called the Lapatronic Energy Storage Unit. So let's grab a uh, Lapatronic energy storage unit. Pretty cool. Uh, this is one block, and I'm actually going to just jump to the part in NEI where all the blocks are hanging out. That's right around here. You can see there's a bunch of cool things going on. Look at all this neat stuff that you're about to find out. Oh yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, the Lapatronic Energy Storage Unit right here um, is a pretty cool block. Once I open up the interface, you can see that it's currently set up. Um, its current amount of EU is zero. The max it can hold is a million. And the max EU per tick that it's allowed to input into it is 32. So this is kind of a lower tier, you know, uh, input. And the max it can output is five. But we can give ourselves this neat little block called the LS, LESU block. The Lapatronic Energy Storage block is an LESU block with a low voltage transformer, a medium voltage transformer, and uh, a couple advanced circuits. Um, I think we've got an advanced circuit and a normal circuit. Nope, both advanced. Okay, cool. The LESU block is simply a uh, circuit surrounded by some lapis modules, so just a regular circuit surrounded by lapis. Okay, when we place these LESU blocks around um, the LESU storage block, it's going to increase the amount it can store. Now it can store 2 million and output 6 EU per tick. Uh, and you can just really expand this as much as you want. You can see now we're storing 4 million with 8 EU per tick. And just, you know, go crazy with it. Like it has a pretty long amount of storage that you can do if you really build this thing out. So right now we're storing 14 million EU total. Uh, pretty cool. 
down to 6 million. So a neat way to store it. It's pretty much an extendable storage unit that, you know, the more blocks you add to it, the more it can store and the more it can output. But it can only accept 32 EU per tick. A more advanced energy storage unit is this big bad boy, um, the adjustable energy storage unit. Now this is a complex machine, okay? You need a Greg Tech computer cube, which I'll explain to you in a moment how that works. It's pretty complicated. You need an advanced machine and some uh, data orbs and energy flow circuits, okay? Energy flow circuits are, uh, you know, a lot of Lapitron crystals and an iridium plate, and that's a complicated machine. Uh, but we've also got um, these things, Lapitron energy orbs, which uh, each require a Lapitron crystal, eight of them surrounded by an iridium plate, and the adjustable energy storage needs eight of those. So you're talking at first like 64 energy crystals? Lapitronic energy crystals? Holy cow. Uh, plus the energy flow circuits and the data orbs, which all require their own crazy, complicated things. Um, yeah, plenty of craziness that we're going to get into, but it's an extremely expensive recipe because it's an extremely powerful block. Uh, simply place it down in the world, and you can see it's pretty cool looking, and open up the interface, and you can see first off it can store 100 million EU. So first off, it can store 10 times as much energy as an MFSU, massive energy storage. And it also has an adjustable um, EU per tick output. Um, you can see it can accept up to extreme voltage, so 2048, and it can output a variable amount that you can adjust with these lines right here. So you can adjust it by one at a time. So right now it's outputting 507 EU per tick. Pretty cool. You can bump it down by 64 at a time, all the way down to zero. And you can say, hey, only output 32 EU per tick. So we don't have to worry about um, adjusting our voltage levels with low voltage and medium voltage and everything. This thing will only output 32 EU per tick and won't blow up your machines, but it can still store up to 100 million EU. That's crazy, um, but pretty neat. You uh, also have your uh, slots over here, so you can go ahead and just easily input them. Now I've got already a uh, AESU set up here. It's currently outputting 32 EU per tick, which is why none of my machines are exploding when attached to it. If I bumped this up a little bit, they could explode. You can see it's currently storing 15 million EU. I've got a high voltage uh, solar panel back there, and it's uh, got a neat little bar down here to show you its progress of being charged. Simply drag your items into the slots from here to here, and it's a quick and easy way to um, charge your um, armor without having to take it off. Next up, we've got the interdimensional energy storage unit. Now, if you thought the last block was expensive in terms of materials, wait until you see the recipe for this guy. He actually requires three of the um, adjustable energy storage units. So this guy that was the crazy recipe, you need three of them to get this guy, the interdimensional storage unit. Um, however, he's extremely powerful in that the interdimensional storage unit is basically the ender chest of um, uh, the MFSU world. It's got one billion energy storage, so it can store a lot of energy. Um, it automatically assigns an uh, ID number, and you can see this guy currently has a little bit of EU in him. That's because I had him hooked up and was messing around with it earlier. Uh, why don't I give myself another interdimensional storage unit and uh, connect him up over here to this uh, power network. You can see this guy's filling up. His EU is increasing. And if I come over to this one over here, it's also increasing the same amount. And I can hook up an output line here, and uh, you know, you can see it outputs at a max of um, extreme voltage, 2048 EU per tick. So you're definitely gonna have to scale that down a little bit, but you just hook up uh, power to the output slot here, and you're good to go and use it. Now, I hate to break this to you guys, but it requires three adjustable energy storage units to make one interdimensional energy storage unit, but this block doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless you have two of them. So keep that in mind. Pretty expensive, but hey, for free wireless energy, uh, you know, hey, once I have a ton of resources, why not? So we've seen how to store a ridiculous amount of energy using either the AESU or IDSU. And you can see I'm charging up my IDSU with lots of power because we're going to need it for the next part, the fusion reactor. Dun, dun, dun. This guy's pretty cool. Uh, you can see the fusion reactor here. Uh, the recipe for the fusion reactor is pretty complicated. It needs a lot of stuff um, right here, Lavatronic energy orbs. And I think this is just an NEI bug at the moment that's showing my item there. Let's get that back up. So uh, energy flow conduit, Lapitronic energy orbs, which by the way, store 10 million EU. So it's kind of an upgraded Lapitron crystal. Requires an iridium plate and some Lapitron crystals, eight of them. But it can store 10 
million EU. Uh, but yeah, fusion reactor, pretty expensive. And you're also going to need a bunch of uh, these guys, the fusion coils, which are uh, require some superconductors, another energy flow circuit, uh, some highly advanced machine blocks, some Tesla coils, and an iridium neutron reflector. I'm not going to show you all the recipes here, but just keep in mind these are some pretty high tier and very expensive items. Uh, but, you know, like I said, Greg Tech adds a lot of high tech stuff. Uh, the fusion reactor, as you can see here, has some sides with a circle and a side with three dots. The circle side is an input. You have to feed this thing a lot of EU in order to kickstart it and get it running. But once it's up and running, it'll produce a ridiculous amount of power. Um, you can see it has two output sides. You actually have to connect to both sides. Um, this machine can output 4,096 EU per tick. So you'll want, um, you know, probably um, some storage units on either side of the block so that uh, both of them can output and receive uh, energy here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place down that interdimensional energy storage block. You can see this thing has a ton of EU going on right now. Um, the other thing to note about this fusion reactor, right now you can see, uh, it tells me that yes, there are coils around it. So before I placed these, this thing said no. But now it says yes. Uh, you have to get a couple different items to place in the input slots here. Uh, there's a couple different recipes you can get, um, but I'm going to show you one of them, which is uh, deuterium cells and helium-3 cells. I'm going to place uh, them right in here like this. Now that I've placed the items inside the slot, I need to start feeding it some EU. So why don't I get my wrench here and uh, shift right click the output face here. Note that it's starting to build up some EU. Now we need to build up to 40 million EU to kickstart this reaction, uh, but then it's going to run for a long time with plenty mm -hmm. of fuel. So I'll come back after we've let this thing charge. Um, also note you can use the fusion reactor to produce some other cool stuff, but we'll get into that in a little bit. All right, you've seen the Greg Tech Computer Cube used a couple times here. Um, it's a pretty, you know, semi-decent recipe. Uh, requires quite a bit of stuff, but it's a neat little block. Don't worry, there's not another programming language to learn. The Greg Tech Computer Code is all um, user interface based. Uh, all I have to do is click the M button on the top right here to change screens. Um, the first screen is just the welcome screen. Hello. Uh, the next screen is the reactor planner. Pretty cool. Um, you can check this guy out by uh, choosing what item you want to place in your reactors and then set them up like that. And then you can, uh, you know, check a couple of different things and uh, it's pretty neat. Just keep in mind though, you have to supply some power to your computer cube in order to run the simulation on your reactors. So pretty neat little device here. Uh, you can kind of mess around with it. You'll also note that there's some other cells that are part of the reactor stuff. You can mess around with that. Um, there's uh, just a bunch of reactor components added uh, to this guy. So you can see here I'm adding coolant cells and just, you know, mess around with them. Pretty slick. And down at the bottom, it's telling you, um, you know, how much heat there is and all that stuff. So it's basically a reactor planner that you can mess around with in game. Awesome, isn't it? Uh, the next page here we can check out. Also note, by the way, you can shift left click to clear this. You can save your reactor settings, load them, and click this button to start the uh, simulation. So pretty cool. <laughs> So I've reset the simulation here. So if I just threw a couple uranium cells next to each other, it's telling me how it's going to run, and uh, and then boom, it blew up. So that was pretty quick. Explosion 14, runtime 417 seconds. Not good, um, but you know you could do a couple other things here. Just mess around with it. It's a pretty cool system for testing your stuff. Oh yeah, see that would run a long time, but it only produce 5 EU per tick, and in the end it tells you how much EU total it creates. Pretty slick. Not bad at all, actually. And then save and load. Cool, let's move on to the next guy, the scanner. This thing can be used on seed bags. So go ahead and insert some seed bags and it'll give you some more information about them. Um, your next pa page here um, shows you all your centrifuge recipes. So if you don't have any I installed or you want to just be able to flip through all the centrifuge recipes, you can see what they are and uh, the EU and recipe um, numbers and all that stuff. So it gives you some good information about your centrifuge and what you need to do there. The next page is your fusion reactor information uh, and the dis different recipes. So uh, here's tritium and deuterium will give you helium cells. Uh, it requires 40 million EU to start with an EU output of uh, 4,096 EU per tick for 256 ticks. Um, and that's um, 
output of uh, 1 billion EU, or 1 million um, per tick. And then uh, this guy just a little bit more. And then this guy is uh, a way to use lithium and wolfram cells to create iridium ore in your reactor. That requires EU 90 million to start and uh, uh, 512 EU per tick for 5,000 ticks to get your iridium ore. Pretty crazy, but uh, a very powerful reactor to produce a lot of energy. And then uh, the last page of this computer cube thing here is just some information about different things and stuff that the Greg Tech author wrote. It tells you, um, you know, pretty much uh, what the fusion reactor is and some other blocks, which I'm about to get into. So these are just descriptive and help pages. So basically, if you want to uh, have some in-game help, the computer cube is the way to go. So, for example, one of the blocks it tells you about in this neat little database is the lightning rod. You can see that you just need to place a lightning rod down with some iron fences on top and some HV transformers around it. And uh, basically, when it storms and there's a lightning storm, it will the lightning will strike this rod and create a ton of EU. Uh, a lightning strike in a lightning rod can create um, 2.5 MFSU's worth of power, so that's 25 million EU. Yeah, pretty crazy. I should also note that the higher you make your lightning rod with iron fences, the more likely you are to get a lightning strike in a thunderstorm. So get this guy up to max height level and you'll be in pretty good shape. Next up, the quantum chest. Uh, this guy, again, pretty complicated, requires um, some highly advanced machine blocks and a teleporter and some data and energy orbs. Uh, complicated stuff. Uh, highly advanced machine block, by the way, requires chrome and titanium ingots around an advanced machine block. Uh, pretty complicated stuff, trust me. Um, but basically, your quantum chest can store almost an infinite amount of items, but all of the same items. So I can just go ahead and throw some cobblestone in there, and it's going to do its best to keep um, a certain stack limit there. So just keep throwing cobblestone in, and it just basically breaks that down into uh, data and tells you how many items of cobblestone are in the chest. Like I said, almost an infinite amount can be stored in here. Uh, if you want to know exactly how much, it's that much down there. Yes, quantum chest can store a lot. Um, and it'll always have a stack available for you. So whenever you want to pull a stack out, it'll instantly refill that stack uh, with its internal buffer. Pretty neat. Um, so this is kind of like the barrel from factorization, uh, but it's uh, industrial crafty. Another new block, the UUM Assembler. Pretty nifty gadget. Uh, requires a bunch of stuff. Um, an electronic crafting table, which I'll get to in a few minutes here, and a couple other crazy advanced items. Uh, this guy acts like a quantum chest in that it can store UUM. You can see I'm um, just throwing UUM into the input here, and it's got plenty to store. Uh, and then what you can do is you can use your UUM um, for different recipes for things. Uh, so you can see I'm kind of placing it here, and this guy tells me that three lava or three UUM like that will uh, create lava. One UUM in the center creates stone, that kind of stuff. Pretty cool. Now, once you've uh, discovered a UUM recipe like this, you can click it on the left here, and uh, it'll store that... Um, that recipe. So there we go. Uh, Ta-da! Store the stone recipe. So now I can take the UM out. If I want to, I can left-click uh, the stone uh, to get that recipe back. Pretty neat. Now the only way you can access these items here is by hooking up um, some kind of automation to the sides of the machine. So if I were to go ahead and get a filter um, or a wooden pipe, for example, wooden transport pipe, and hooked up a autarkic gate to it. Uh, this will start outputting some lappies for me. So the current recipe can be automated and output like that. Pretty spiffy. Uh, just gotta store this in the table over there like that, and then it'll start outputting stuff. And the one last thing I'll note about the uh, UUM assembler is that it says here it's designed to work with red power retrievers. So you can go ahead and set up a bunch of recipes inside your UUM assembler, feed a bunch of UU matter in there, and the retriever should be able to pull it out pretty well. Pretty slick. All right, let's check out some other cool things. Um, the next block to show you guys here is right down here. Uh, quick note, uh, there's a super condensator and super conductor wire. Uh, this thing can hold any amount of EU in the wire, and this thing can upconvert your EU to like a crazy amount, but it's for future growth. Uh, there's no items that can use the silly amount of EU that this thing can create. Next up, we've got the Chargomat. Pretty nifty little device. Uh, just go ahead and place it next to some kind of power source or connect it into your energy line. Uh, you can place any items you want on the uh, left slide here, and they'll pretty quickly get uh, charged up. Look at that. 
Neat. Neat. Um, pretty nifty device. Basically, a charging bench. Does a nice job. The player detector block here does require a bit of power. Uh, you can change it to detect only you, uh, detect other players, and detect all players. Pretty neat. And it'll go ahead and emit a redstone signal when it's detecting. So if I set it to detect me, redstone signal, when I'm within 16 blocks. Back up a little bit, and it should no longer be able to detect me. Get a little bit closer again, and it does see me. Switch it to other players, and it won't be emitting the signal. Next up, we've got the Sonictron. Pretty neat little device. Uh, it allows you to play music. So if you're a music composer here, you can kind of set uh, whatever you want in the interface here and do all kinds of crazy stuff to play music. Um, pretty cool. Go ahead and play with uh, the interface here to see what kind of blocks make what kind of sounds, and then just apply a redstone signal for it to play. Cool. And you can even get yourself a Sonictron, a portable one here, that uh, if you sneak right click, it'll go ahead and uh, store the data on that thing. Pretty neat. Next up, we've got the Matter Fabricator. Uh, this will replace the Mass Fabricator. Um, it's a config option, so you can go ahead and, you know, leave the Mass Fabricator in if you want. But uh, it's meant to replace the Mass Fabricator. It requires scrap. It is no longer optional and requires a lot more energy than the original Mass Fabricator. Um, so you have to give it a lot of scrap and a lot of energy to produce your uh, UU Matter. So it's configurable as well, uh, how much energy it requires, but by default, 100 times more energy than normal scrap mass fabrication. Oh boy. Yeah, pretty expensive stuff. Next up, nifty little device, electronic translocator. Uh, this guy, pretty spiffy, uh, simply place him in the world. And he can, when given power, transfer items from one inventory to the next. So let me get myself an iron chest or two and give this guy a shot. So you can see there's a red side and a green side. And this does require EU, uh, but it'll take items from the green side and places them into the red side slot. So uh, let me get some EU going on here. Grab myself an advanced solar panel, just straight out of the block. And uh, you can see it's pretty spiffy. So let's go ahead and place some items into the chest here. And you can see they got pulled out of the green side and placed into the red side. And you can also use the interface here to change the filter and stuff like that. And uh, a couple other nifty stuff that you can do with this little button. Now, uh, one upgrade to the translocator is the advanced translocator. Similar setup, however, uh, you can tell it which side to pull out of and put items into. So it basically has sneaky pipe style functionality. And again, it still has this button here. Um, you can transfer energy through this block so that if I ran some wiring out the side of this block, it would be able to transfer energy through it, uh, as well as relocate items from one block to the next. So pretty nifty. Next up, we've got the electric crafting table. Simply put a crafting recipe in the middle and uh, some buffer inventory on your left, and you'll be able to electronically craft some stuff. It does require EU to do this. Um, you can input items to the green side and output from the red side using uh, build craft pipes or red power. Pretty neat. Another nifty little gadget that I want to show you guys are the buffers. Uh, now, large and small electric buffers act kind of like Red Power 2 relays or the Buildcraft hopper. Uh, the small one I'll place down here, uh, and you can see that it has an output facing slot. Uh, and it only has one inventory to uh, store items, so you can, uh, you know, transfer items into this thing, and it'll pretty much uh, be able to store items and automatically output them on the red facing side. So if I throw some uh, iron in there, you'll see it'll spit it directly into the chest. Now, the advanced buffer here, uh, which is a little bit more advanced. It's a larger one, actually. Uh, that is right here. So if I place this guy like so, and uh, we'll put a chest on this side, you can see this has a much larger buffer space and has a bunch of different options. Uh, you can emit energy through this block, just like you could on the uh, other one that I showed you a few minutes ago. Uh, you can also change a setting for emit redstone if no slot is free, versus don't emit redstone, and emit redstone if no slot is free or you can invert the redstone setting. Pretty neat. Don't invert. So that'll uh, emit the redstone slot under the other circumstances. So pretty cool. Um, you can see when or not it's uh, inverting the redstone. It does use a little bit of EU to transfer its items. I think it's two EU per item transferred into the adjacent inventory, um, but that's a small price to pay for having this nifty little buffer. And you can rotate it using the wrench on what slot it gets uh, buffered up to. 
pretty slick. So uh, if you want to buffer up into the bottom of your machines or to the top or the sides, pretty easy way to do that using the electric buffer. All right, guys, here's a pretty nifty guy, the electric rock breaker. Simply put uh, water and lava on either side and then supply it a little bit of EU, and it'll start to output cobblestone into the side where the red um, side is, the red facing side. Pretty nifty little device. And finally, we have the electric sorter. Again, requires a little bit of energy. Uh, you can tell it what direction to put items in. You don't have to give it specifics. And uh, you can tell it, you know, um, certain items can go in a certain direction. So right now I'm facing north, as you can see by Ray's mini map in the top right. Um, so this chest is to the north of the block and any dirt that I place inside this uh, auto sorting system will get sorted into the north chest. And uh, anything else that goes in there will not go to the north chest, but will instead go to um, the west chest. You can see that there. So west um, is the one that's off to the left here. Pretty neat. Electronic sorter. Not bad. And now let's talk about a few of the items that are added in here. You can see there's a bunch of different items that are added. Um, crazy, wacky stuff, basically. Uh, you can see there's that Lapatronic Energy Orb, which I mentioned stores 10 million EU. Um, I'm going to show you a couple different items that are also um, available to you here. You also get a Lapatron pack and... Uh, you know, some pretty cool stuff. You get a rock cutter, which is a uh, tool which has silk touch on it. So uh, the rock cutter, a little expensive, needs some steel ingots and uh, electronic circuit, rechargeable battery, and three diamonds. But uh, this guy is pretty cool. It's basically a built-in silk touch. So when you harvest stuff with it, it gives you um, what you would get if you had harvest with silk touch. Not too bad. A uh, nifty electronic version of that. Uh, you've also got your Destructo Pack. Pretty neat. Uh, anything you placed in there is deleted from the world. So it's basically a void pipe in your hand. Cool. So if you don't feel like dropping items on the ground, go ahead and just uh, open up your Destructo Pack and anything you place in there is instantly deleted. Awesome. Uh, you can also see you get that Lapatron Pack stored on your back there and it stores a bunch of EU. The light helmet is actually really cool. Um, why don't I make it uh, dark out? And you should see that it automatically creates a light source around your player wherever you go. Um, pretty spiffy. So you can see this light source uh, constantly updating as I walk around. Works great in caves to keep your area lit up all around you. So the light helmet uh, basically is a light source around the player. And, uh, you know, to prevent lag, it doesn't like update constantly, but it will turn on after it's been on your head for a second or two. Pretty awesome. You might have also noticed this little guy uh, right here, the mortar, uh, pretty slick. Uh, you just combine a bowl with a piece of flint. What can you use a mortar for? Well, it's like a one-time use um, macerator. So if you need to get some uh, coal dust, you can just, you know, combine a mortar and some coal. Uh, gold can become gold dust. Uh, clay can become clay dust, copper to copper dust, etc. It can't do every type of dust in the game, but it can do a good handful of them. Pretty neat. And of course, like I said, there's a couple other kinds of cells for use in nuclear reactors. And that about wraps it up. Uh, you can see there's different thorium cells, plutonium cells. Oh boy, crazy stuff. Uh, pretty nifty though. You also get some new batteries. Uh, you can see there's a lithium battery and a lithium bat pack. Uh, just, you know, stores a little bit more energy. Uh, does require some lithium cells to get that cool stuff. But overall, pretty spiffy. Um, yeah, awesome. So that about wraps up the Greg Tech add-on. Like I said, it's a really advanced version of Industrial Craft. It kind of adds a bunch of higher tier blocks for use with crazy amounts of energy. Um, but, you know, pretty spiffy, adds some cool things. Uh, I definitely think it's a neat mod and worth checking out. I, I do plan to use this one, I think, in my Season 5 of my Let's Play. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to enable the more difficult recipes, but there are a few things here like this uh, Industrial Centrifuge, which is really cool for collecting certain amounts of items. And then maybe down the line I'll eventually build some of the really advanced stuff like uh, you know the the fusion reactor and the crazy storage blocks so yeah definitely a neat add-on recommend you guys checking it out you can download it at the link in the description of this video so this is direwolf20 signing off on the greg tech spotlight um, like I said a very complex mod I may have missed a couple of things but I'm pretty sure I covered most of them um, I'll talk to the mod author and if he tells me I missed anything important you might be seeing a uh, part two of the spotlight in the future all right guys Take it easy.